guys. February had just passed us. There was love in the air. We felt it or we were all alone during quarantine and we really felt nothing. Either or, love is in the air. It doesn't matter which universe you're in. If you're a superhero or a super villain, everybody needs love at some point in their life. Guys, welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host for today, Taylor McWaters. And on today's list, we'll be counting down our top 10 greatest superhero couples. Let's dive in. Number 10, Spider-Man and Black Hat. Peter Parker and Felicia Hardy. They're one of the more interesting relationships in Peter's life. Well, rather Spider-Man's life, that is. See, she entered the Spider-Man comics back in 1979 with Amazing Spider-Man issue 194. And her father, Walter, was a famous cat burglar before her, and he often inspired her to be the best at whatever she does. Is that bowling? Is it paint by numbers? No, it's being a burglar. She had a pretty rough origin story as well. I mean, she learned how to train and become an expert in combat just to take out a guy who had assaulted her at a party. So when it comes down to finally getting payback, he was in a fatal car crash thanks to alcohol. Don't drink and drive. So she had these skills now and nothing or nobody to tackle them with. So she took a page out of her father's book. She donned a cool suit and became Black Hat. Shortly after she met Spider-Man, both in costume, very important, and she fell for him. She could tell that he was this kind soul and she trusted him. And of course the superpowers and backflips surely helped. Now that trust quickly evolved to lust and then to love. Eventually Spider-Man revealed himself, his true self as Peter Parker, and she had a pretty tough time accepting the fact that he was just this average kid. So the relationship is enjoyable and different because it's all about the super life. It's not so much about Peter being there as a boyfriend or what he is as a person at home. She just wanted to work with a partner on the streets and tights, they wouldn't hurt as well. Everyone loves tights. The Spider-Man PS4 game nails that love triangle. If you haven't played that already, you have to check it out. And before we head over to number nine, if you guys could go ahead and give us a thumbs up on this video, those likes really do wonders for this channel. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. Now back to more super lovers. Number nine, Green Lantern and Star Sapphire. One of the most powerful couples in the DC universe, Hal Jordan and Carol Ferris. They're one of those couples that's off and on again, but I mean, the ones worth fighting for usually end up being the ones that are worth it or something nice like that. So Carol owned the Ferris Aircraft Company and then had found herself attracted to the fearless pilot, but she couldn't follow through because, you know, for sure not allowed, especially in those rankings. And she also loved the hero, the Green Lantern, without connecting the dots. Double the love, triple the excitement. Now, Carol was selected to become queen of the Xamarons, but she didn't want to leave Earth because, you know, Hal Jordan. So the Xamarons brainwashed her and she became a villain named Star Sapphire. And she fought the Green Lantern, she lost, they left, they took her memory, she got her powers back, but not her memory so she thought superman was responsible for killing green lantern although he's still alive that her memory returned and she kept the gem that gave her her powers and her love mixed with his willpower makes for a pretty epic super couple they're one of my favorites number eight thor and jane the god of thunder from down under and jane foster it's a relationship that's still being worked out in the mcu currently with natalie portman returning to play jane foster now the last we heard they broke up well i mean jane dumped him or it was a mutual dumping of sorts but this relationship began back in the 60s when readers were introduced to jane she attended med school and was soon hired by dr donald blake who was actually of course thor in disguise they're the king and queen of long distance holy crap one lives on earth the other is asgard Guard, and they're totally devoted for each other. And at one point, Jane actually takes over and becomes the god of thunder, while Thor was unworthy of wielding Mjolnir. Now, her time as Thor was pretty exciting, of course, but the only catch was that she had cancer, and that that cancer would worsen every time she used the godly powers to save the day. Jane ended up fighting until her very last days when she sadly passed away in Thor's arms. Now, Natalie Portman is returning for Thor 4, Love and Thunder, and she'll wield the hammer. Let's just I just hope she doesn't have to deal with any of those life-altering side effects. Number seven, Catwoman and Batman. When it comes to dating, Bruce Wayne doesn't really need too much luck. He's got the charm, he's got the looks. I mean, the money, sure, that's that's a plus, we like that. Selena Kyle made her first comic book debut in Batman 1 back in the early 40s, simply known as just the cat. Now the pair were actually married at one point, believe it or not, on Earth 2. And they had a child named Helena Wayne who grew up, of course, to become the Huntress. Now in the 50s, the Comics Code Authority made the duo go through it. See, they were putting these restrictions on everything, and Batman being with a criminal just sent the wrong message to kids. So now Bruce also has this on and off thing going on with Talia al Ghul, and almost every depiction of these two characters, they end up having the hots for each other. So Talia is cool, and she's there sometimes, but most of the time, it's Catwoman. So they both end up together at the end of the Nolan Batman trilogy. It's a plot point in the Batman the Animated Series, and in Batman Returns. Now we're just looking forward to seeing this romance come back to life yet again with Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz in Matt Reeves' Batman. 
Number 6, Aquaman and Mera. Mera made her first comic book debut in Aquaman issue 11. She was once the queen of Dimension Aqua until a criminal named Liron took over control and got rid of Queen Mera. So Mera went to the Earth Dimension and then that's when she met Aquaman and his sidekick Aqua Lad. They offered to help her and Liron soon captured both of them and brought them back to Dimension Alpha. Aquaman comes, saves the day thanks to the help of Gwisp and then he defeats Liron. Mera returns to Atlantis with Aquaman. The two fall in love get married, and then they made their new home at the Atlantean Royal Palace. How lovely. Some have argued that Mera is in fact more powerful than Aquaman, being pure Atlantean and trained in the mystic arts. Do you guys agree? Let us know in the comments. Number five, Jean Grey and Scott Summers. Cyclops and Jean Grey become pretty close in the school for gifted youngsters. After Scott was given a visor made of ruby quartz, he could now control his power, and he looked pretty cool. He shortly became a deputy leader of the X-Men and then fell in love with his teammate, Jean Grey. Sounds like a normal young love evolving under the roof of gifted youngsters. Their honeymoon, however, that's, that's when the super stuff comes in and takes it up a notch. See, their honeymoon, they were sent into the future in different bodies to raise Cyclops and Madeline Pryor's son, Nathan, who we now know as Cable. I mean that, or... Sandals Resort, you know, make your pick. They keep it interesting, at least, you know? She's in his head too. I mean, literally, Jean has now created a psychic link between them both, giving them the ability to read each other's minds. Now, I can't tell if I'd love that or hate that. I mean, of course, they went strong until Jean sacrificed herself to save everybody from the Dark Phoenix Force, and Scott would surely take his time moving on. Number four, Superman and Wonder Woman. Clark and Lois may be a great couple, but when you think of the new 52 run with Superman and Wonder Woman, I mean, if we're looking at super couples, we've got to go with Superman's other girl, Wonder Woman. They were literally known as the power couple, and that part of Superman's life has basically been written out or forgotten, and fans thought that it was rather forced. Now, in the Justice League issue 12, we find a front cover illustration that is quite memorable. Sometimes key intimate moments are hard to conceal when you have the powers of gods. So after The Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller decided to dive into a scene we didn't know we needed to see with both of them. So her and Superman get it on, and they do it in the sky, of course, because I mean, you know, where else do you go? A hotel? No, it's far too boring. The sky is literally the limit. So this caused massive tidal waves. I mean, volcanoes were blasting off. They even shifted the earth a bit. People were evacuating islands. Guys, this is crazy. This is like a terrible day. This is a terrible day for everybody, but those two get it on. Next time you guys want to get it on for five pages, maybe, I don't know, go to space, Mars, Antarctica. That'd be kind of, mm, still human, still bad. Just go to space. Go do it in space. Number three, Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman. The Fantastic Four is coming to the MCU. Finally, here we go. And one of the biggest rumors is that John Krasinski and his real wife, Emily Blunt, will be playing Sue Storm and Reed Richards. I hope this happens, or Pam from The Office. We'll, we'll take her as well. She's great. So Sue and Reed first met back when they were children at a boarding house. They grew up together and went to become part of an epic superhero team, which is great. Sue with the powers of invisibility and force fields, and Reed is now super stretchy. They're a brilliant couple. Like education-wise, they're literally brilliant. Reed's a genius, and in the early days, he wasn't too nice to Sue, but the writing fortunately changed, or at least he'd gotten better. Sue often has to get Reed out of trouble, but he's got the brains. He likes to make all their gear, and on top of that, they also have some pretty super kids at one point. Franklin and Valeria Richards, whose powers are even more impressive than that of their parents. Number two, Vision and Scarlet Witch. Guys, spoilers coming in hot for WandaVision. If you're not caught up, skip this one. Perhaps one of the more interesting couples. He's an android and she's a witch. And they go through quite a lot together. Especially now in the MCU, we're gearing up for the finale of WandaVision and the love between these two is really making things complicated for S.W.O.R.D. See, Vision and Wanda tied the knot back in 1974 and they've even welcomed twins. The catch was these twins of Wanda and Vision came out of nowhere and it was revealed that their souls were actually part of Mephisto's. Which is currently a running theory with Agatha Harkness being this antagonist in WandaVision. I don't think they're gonna bring in Mephisto. I think they're gonna do more of a nightmare type thing, keep them more kid friendly. But these twins have also grown up in the comics to be known as Wiccan and Speed, bearing magic and super speed as their parents alike. So in the MCU, Wanda and Vision's romance is super fun to watch. They both got their abilities from the same Infinity Stone. So although Vision's dead, dead, I think, who knows? There's clearly some sort of connection left still. My guess is that she has part of his soul inside of her from the Infinity War sacrifice. Wanda is super powerful. She once in the comics changed the entire world simply by wishing for no more mutants. And she can break reality as we all know it. And I can't wait to see what happens in the show because it's wild. She is fully now the Scarlet Witch. And let me tell you, 
a lot of goosebumps. I may or may not have stood up about that after credit part. And finally, number one, Gambit and Rogue. They first met in 1991 in X-Men and they've had an on and off relationship for about 30 years. Remy LeBeau and Anna Marie, they had their first date in X-Men issue 24. When Gambit transports them away off campus, they bond over some gumbo. They bond over the fact that they both carry abandonment issues and with Rogue's inability to touch and with Gambit's criminal past, hell, it's a match made in heaven. He doesn't want to talk about his wife, Belladonna, and she just wants him to tell her how he feels about her. It's a rocky start, but in X-Men issue 33, we finally get the first I love you. And it comes from Rogue after she hears about Gambit's shady past. It's wonderful. Then the following years were full of split ups and then realizing they couldn't live without each other. Heck, love sure ain't easy. <laughs> well guys, there you have it. Which of these super powered couples are your favorite? If I could have a double date with any of them, I'd for sure pick Sue Storm and Reed Richards. I don't know, even if they have one of their bad nights, it'd be cool to watch them fight, like argue. You know, like with his arms and she's like, get out of here. She turns invisible, leaves the room. I don't know, it'll be fun. Guys, I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Thank you so much for watching Top 10 Nerd and we'll catch you on the next time. Peace.